Yo, what's up? Well, today I'm fashion with Casey Wiggle for the pros and the cons of hanging out in Johannesburg, South Africa. Engage. I'm Rockland. I travel the globe for leisure, exploration, and education about different cultures. Join me, and you too can be royalty. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. Johannesburg is the cleanliness. Compared to places like Mexico, the Caribbean, and Detroit, the cleanliness of this part of South Africa is some of the cleanest stuff you'll find in the world. I was still afraid of drinking the water and was not going to risk getting sick, but looking back on it, I'm ashamed to think that I might have been overreacting. But at the same time, I don't drink that much unbottled water in the States. So in the long run, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. The highways, buildings, high-rises, roads are just as good, if not better, than those in the U.S. Whoever thinks Johannesburg, South Africa is still a so-called developing country needs to realize that it's developed probably, I'd say, about 10 times more than you may think it is. I'm very ashamed of how the U.S. media had me thinking this place would look compared to how it looks in reality. Dangerous. <laughs> it's easy and dangerous at the same time? It's busy, like. Oh, busy. busy. Oh, okay. Um, That's how um, Costa Rica is, too. It's busy all the time. Huh? We don't hold the phone like that? <laughs> well, <laughs> you you don't like that. I don't? And, and you don't go, what did you say? Don't go with your phone like, like that? that no, you can't. You can't even put it like, phone like that. Look! This. Uh, people know? Yeah, yeah that's the way to roll. Yeah. And we're all here. Yes. In where? In, in there. In Zimbabwe or here? No, in Josie. In Josie? No, no. There's no, there's no stars. You can go with the phone like this. What they gonna do? They gonna snatch it from me? Yeah, and Josie will snatch it. I'm from the Bronx, man. I'll be like. Right. <laughs> you, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that people kept telling me that once nightfall comes, this place gets so much more crazier. I just didn't see it. I mean, I did talk to one of the Uber drivers and he's talking about the dangers out there. He said that an Uber driver got killed by one of the taxi drivers because they're tired of the Uber dudes taking all of their business. As I told him, the cab drivers in the States are really upset about Uber taking all of their business too. Now, I wouldn't say nobody's getting killed out here, but I know there is still a lot of hostility. He didn't seem to think that <laughs> he didn't seem to think that it was the same amount of danger. And hey, he's probably right. So for the record, let me just say if if townships were so prominent, they would have been all over the place. I didn't see any. I didn't meet with any Tony Montana accent dudes ready to rob me. I mean, I wasn't looking like I was filming a music video every day. So if you're gonna be in some poor neighborhoods, like if you're in poor neighborhoods in the U.S. They'll be walking around with a whole bunch of expensive stuff and make sure that the team that you're with are ready to defend you or you'll be better off rolling by yourself. The Uber driver also told me to watch out for the crazy Nigerian dope boys that come to Johannesburg and be set tripping and opening trap houses. And yeah, he said it like that, word for word. See, but my thing is I didn't see any of that. Plus, I know how in America they always try to paint this picture of how crazy and terrible these black people are gonna be. So I'm not falling for it out there either. And maybe that makes me a naive dude, 
but I'd rather be a little bit naive than to be sitting around there being afraid of my own people. What exactly is this device? Uh, it stops it from shaking, like when you record can video. I, can I, can I, ooh, can I hold this? Why do you need to hold it, bro? Nah. I'll show you what it do. I like, usually move up and down. Oh, okay. It makes the, it stabilize the video. Where you from, bro? Miami. From the Bronx. From the Bronx? Yeah, okay. From African Bambada's hood, man. <laughs> you from African Bambada's hood? Uh, but you know what the problem is? African Bambada uh, was, uh, you know, molesting a lot of kids. Yeah, kids I heard about that, yeah. Ruin his own legacy, man. That's crazy. So, so how long you been for? Like, less than a week. Less than a week? Yeah. Fuck Trump, bro. Yeah, you guys you're know there's right, already standing, there's already standing on his, that's already uh, opposing the Second Amendment. Uh -huh. You know that I wouldn't be surprised. Guys, right? Not all of us. This is all my time. Yeah. 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 Just to go for it. You, you said Walmart. They're, they're gonna they're gonna close down Walmart uh -huh. and use those as military logistical points. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you look at martial law's name, M A R T is martial, and the the the, the, the law is uh -huh. spelled backwards. You just need a winner us winner us in Walmart. <laughs> no, 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 don't lock the You might be. I don't. I don't, I don't put nothing past it, man. It might be true. Speaking of better safe than sorry, some people would say that going through the townships is the only way to get that authentic experience. But after my trip, I will wholeheartedly say that that's not true. It's not like the city is filled with townships. The city is super industrialized, modernized. Would a person say they never really experienced Atlanta if they didn't get a chance to hang out in the bluffs? Or Chicago without seeing the old Cabrini Green or the rougher sides of the South Side? Seeing what the poorest of a community does does not mean you saw the real black people. It's a stupid notion. Plus the people there ain't gonna be that happy to see you unless you bringing them some paper, you know, and you'll get the same reaction as you would get in Brownsville, Fort Greene, McKinley, or Parkchester. And like I said a couple of videos back, I ain't in the drug game. So most of the times when people are upset with each other, it's because they're competing over some drug territory. And if I ain't in it, leave me out of it. Passport Kings will never be just about me bragging about how much I travel. This is about you and how you can too. The new 2018 version of my free book called Make Money From Home So You Can Travel More, I'll go through some of the high risk investments in yourself to the low risk jobs from home where the return is not as high but it's stable no upfront cost and making your own schedule and working for a fortune 500 companies from home so go to www.passportkings.com click on the link on the right side and learn how you can start making enough money so you can travel where you want to go when you want to go one of the things that i love to do when i'm in a different country is try out some new food as you can see by the weight that i gained all right so in south africa i heard all of this talk about king clip i'm like what is king clip well, it's a slender, eel-like fish that grows a lot in South Africa. I mean, it comes from some old Dutch word that means king of the rock. Well, I had that on my first night there. And let me tell you, it tastes just like fish. Well, I guess it, because it was fish. But I mean, it was a little dry, but other than that, I had an enjoyable time eating it and trying it out. The next night, I had ostrich. And here is my ostrich. I'm invited to see what's going on with the ostrich. Well, nobody else would have ordered the ostrich. Now, the ostrich, it tastes just like steak. I had it from a restaurant called Tasha's. I guess it was a little rough on the outside, but other than that, it was great. But some of the best food that I had in Johannesburg is when I stopped at this little streetcar that was selling steak and some type of porridge, I guess. It was like an oatmeal that they put gravy on. I didn't really like that part that much, but when I got to the steak, it was excellent. The little old lady in the food truck, she knew what she was doing. I also ate some McDonald's a couple of the nights, which leads me into my next point. I mean, change your money to Rand's. Actually, you don't really have to because, well, they have these little portable chip readers. They slide your card right in front of your face, no matter what establishment you're in. Whoever made those chip readers for South Africa, this person must be riches all out because every single establishment uses the same chip reader. But if your bank is like mine, they'll send a notification of how much your Rand purchase was worth. And actually, other than the street vendors and the casinos, there's actually no real reason to carry Rands on you. But I just wanted to tell you that you will be amazed when you realize how much USD is worth to Rand. 
The Uber drivers would tell you how much your trip is worth in rands. It sounds like a reasonable amount of money, but if you're like me, you use your Google on your phone and then you just put rands to USD. And when you realize how much you're about to pay this Uber driver, it's almost embarrassing to give him such a low amount of money for the amount of driving that he's done. Even at McDonald's, I brought about three regular sized meals that in the US would probably come up to a little bit over $20. This thing was like four bucks. Somebody told me that it's just that the rands are very weak towards the US dollar. Well, there must be some sanctions on South Africa or something because I think it's ridiculously weak. And I know that they said like the BMWs and the Range Rovers don't have to ship as far so they're a little bit cheaper out in South Africa. But let me tell you, everybody had a BMW or a Range Rover in South Africa. I mean, there's as many of those as there are Camrys and Ultimas in Atlanta. And like I said, with the rate of their currency, I thought of buying one and just having it shipped, but then I realized the steering wheel is on the wrong side. But I guess it wouldn't have been Africa without this stereotypical safari. The US media would have you believe that you'd just be driving down the street and tigers would be running down the street and lions and elephants would come stepping on the top of your car. But it wasn't like that. We had to go to a safari to see all of those exotic animals. And it was amazing. I asked one of the drivers, where were the jungle cats? <laughs> He was laughing. He said he always gets people that come there treating them like the stereotypes they've seen on TV. He was like, at this point nowadays, he doesn't even get offended by it anymore. And he knew that I was saying it tongue in cheek. But he did tell me where the great safari was and that's where we went the next day. Now, many people are not risk takers when it comes to things like safari and wild animals. And it's probably smarter not to be. But I also don't like how a lot of times African Americans look like we're so afraid of everything. Like one of those old step and fetch it movies. I'd like to take into consideration if these animals was killing everyone, these safaris would be closed. And that's just like bungee jumping places. They'd be closed too if the courts kept popping, which is the same as airlines would be finished if planes kept falling out of the sky. A tiny select few of these things can happen, but the odds are just not in your favor for it to happen to you. I say just take reasonable precautions like everyone else. You're not that special. And it's embarrassing when I see black people acting like they're so afraid because this is the day that their life comes to an end where everyone else is just standing around there having a good time. Well, somebody asked me, was the safari the same as a zoo? My response is no, in a zoo, the animals are in the cage. In a safari, you're in a cage with four wheels. Now you gotta block the road. Come on. Telling me how terrible it is out here, and I said it looks nice here to me. So you'll be surprised. Ah. I was like, yeah, you'd be surprised. You go to Manhattan thinking the rest of New York is like that too. Right. The power plugs are different. It's like three prong. It's impossible to get one of your U.S. power plugs in there. So if you're in the hotel, just call downstairs and tell them you need an extension. They'll rush one up to you, and you'll be able to plug in your 12 volt plug. There's a supermarket called Woolworth. They call it the bougie supermarket. And I guess it was kind of bougie. It'll give you the whole Whole Foods vibe and it had the customers to match. But I will admit, the things that I brought from there, they just felt extra fresh and extra clean. So it was a pleasant experience to get some groceries and a few other items. Now we were scheduled to go to Mandela's house and people just told me it was in the township surrounded by a whole bunch of other people's houses. And I was also told that there was a restaurant over there that we could eat that was owned by Mandela's family. But when I asked all the people around where I was staying, they told me that Mandela's family had nothing to do with that restaurant. So it took away all of my interest of going there. But we did go to the Mandela Square. The only thing is, I didn't think it would be a mall. 
that was kind of disappointing, but we had a good time at the mall. Ate a lot of food, drank a lot of drinks, met a lot of cool people. Just had an all around good time. Yo, don't forget to check out PassportKings.com. I have some awesome new color and new design Passport King shirts available. Look through the options and pick up the one you like the most. The next time somebody tells me you need to go back to Africa, I'd be so privileged. I can't wait to go back for Cape Town and Table Mountain. And just like here, the politics really didn't have any effect on the everyday life of people. From what I've seen, the propaganda is an illusion. Go out to South Africa or any other parts in Africa and find out the truth about those places for yourself. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Don't only believe your country's propaganda. Go out and explore like a king of passport king. <laughs> <Zero girl. laughs> okay. So, um, with these lions, we've got our one. We're snoring. And he's got five girls. So, before we gave these five girls this boy, we gave them another boy called Nicholas. And the girls bullied Nicholas. They slapped him around. They stole his food away. They really weren't very nice to Nicholas. Nicholas felt very sorry for himself. He begged us to take him out. We took him out, we gave him to another boy called Tsatsi, and the girls did exactly the same to the Tsatsi. Mm -hmm. So we called them the Benoni girls, mm -hmm. but after about two weeks the Tsatsi decided enough is enough, and he slapped one of the girls. After he slapped one of the girls, they all respected him. Now, the reason they respected him is they knew that if he stands up to them, he will stand up to any lion that tries and takes over the territory. So only once a lion establishes his dominance will the females allow him to actually make it in. 